taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for our virtual teen activity at the Cumberland County Public Library. My name is Samantha and I'm a librarian at the Bordeaux branch of the Cumberland County Public Library. Today I'm going to be showing you guys an activity that you can do at home anywhere in the world for free and it can get you a lot of likes on social media. So today we're going to be talking about land art. What is land art? Also known as earth art or ephemeral art, land art is any art that is made directly in the landscape. So it can be using um, the natural world around us, the materials of the natural world, um, like our sticks and leaves right here. Um, or it can be something that's placed out in the landscape to highlight a part of the earth. Um, some artists who do land art are Cornelia Conrad's, James Brunt, Andy Goldsworthy, and Lita Albuquerque. So today we're going to go over how you can make your own land art and how you can share that with us here at the Cumberland County Public Library. So the first step is to find a location. Normally we would have done this outside, but today we have a lot of rain in Cumberland County, so we're going to be doing an indoor version of our land art using some potting soil, a food tray, and some leaves that I collected while it was still dry. So the first thing to do is to get some inspiration. Like I said, you can look up those artists or you can go to Instagram where Land Art has over 380,000 hashtag posts. So today I'm taking my inspiration mostly from Andy Goldsworthy and from James Brunt, who uses geometrical patterns in his art while Andy Goldsworthy uses a lot of color inspiration. So I'm gonna combine those two a little bit to make a little small version of land art for you right here in our tub. So as you can see here, I have different colored leaves, sticks, and a pine cone. I feel like making a spiral today, so I'm gonna start with my pine cone in the center. And you can sketch your land art out first if you'd like, or you can just go at it and do what feels right. So before we continue, I want to share a few tips on gathering your supplies for your land art. One, you don't want to take too much from the land. You want to make sure that we're being environmentally friendly. A good rule of thumb is to take no more than 10% of anything you find. Two, we want you to be safe. So if you don't know if a plant is poisonous, please don't pick it up. It's actually also a good idea to wear gloves in case there are spiders or snakes lurking in your area. So I'm going to start by picking out some of the brown leaves to match my pine cone. So we have leaves of green and brown in here and some different gradients too. And we're gonna go ahead and make a spiral. And land art, land art can be very relaxing. This doesn't have to be something that's perfect. It doesn't have to be something that's super precise. This is a good meditative activity to get you out in nature, focusing on your surroundings and just taking a deep breath. So we're gonna start by just forming a little spiral around our pine cone. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect spiral. If one leaf's a little bigger than the other, that's fine. It depends on what type of land art you're making. Some land art, like Andy Goldsworthy's, can be very, very precise, but other land art can just be about the process, and that's what we're doing here today. So then I wanna take a little bit of a gradient and start bringing in some greener leaves but not too green. We're gonna go for the ones that are partially brown so that we can get a little sense of the changing of the seasons. We're gonna go around and around. And in the picture that we've actually shared with you of um, Andy Goldsworthy's work, he actually used his own spit to stick the leaves on. <laughs> he cut them up, tore them up, and then stuck them there with a spit. So whatever tools you have on hand, work for land art. So we're going in a circle and now I'm going to start bringing in some of our greener leaves so we can get a nice bright spring color around the edges. And like I said, it doesn't have to be fancy and a lot of it can be made fancier using photography if you want to share that. But for me, this is really more about the process and about relaxing and getting to know nature a little better. See, this one's a little too dark. I want a brighter green leaf here. There we go. So that's the beginning of my land art. But land art doesn't have to stay two-dimensional like this. So I brought some sticks as well 
and we're just going to stick those and lay them on our pine cone to create a little more height and interest. Oops, fell over. See, that's fine. We can do this. Fortunately, you can always undo your work with land art too. Take another little one here. And another little one here. So that's my land art that I've created. It's simple, it's just some geometric shapes, a little play on color, not very fancy, but you can take as much time with yours as you want. You can spend hours making the perfect piece of land art, or you can spend 20 minutes and take a break out in nature. It's up to you. But what we would love to do is see your land art. So if you could come to us and post yours on social media and tag us at CCPLIC, we would love to see what land art you've created. So as with most art, land art is often made with a purpose. And that purpose tends to be environmental in nature. Usually the artists are trying to send some sort of message about what's going on in the natural world. Now there are a lot of conflicting stories about what is going on in the natural world right now. And this book, Eyes Wide Open, Going Behind the Environmental Headlines, aims to demystify some of what we're hearing and seeing in the news about our climate and our world. This book, written by Paul Fleischman, goes behind the scenes of all of the different environmental issues affecting us today. This book was selected as a Junior Library Guild selection and was also a starred library journal, starred selection in the School Library Journal. The author decided to write this book because he'd been finding dead bees in his yard and he wanted to go further to see what was happening in, in our environment. If you want to know more about what's going on in our world, you can get this book too. We have it available in the Cumberland County Public Library System as well as available on Overdrive and the Libby app. If you would like to reserve it, you can go online and place a hold, or you can go to the Libby app and borrow it from, our, from the NC Digital Library. So once again, this is our land art project, and it's very simple, very easy to make, but you can make it as complex as you want. We would love to see more of the art that you guys create by going online and tagging us at CCPLIC. As you can see, land art is ephemeral. That means it's only here for a limited time, but you can save it by taking a photograph and sharing it with us. Thank you guys so much for attending. We look forward to seeing your projects. Have a great day.